Good afternoon. Welcome to Home Buyers Seminar. We do every Wednesday, four o'clock or five o'clock ish. I'm Bill Gross, at Bill Gross on Probate Media, uh, uh, at Bill Gross Probate on social media, along with my colleague. Yes, Patricia Castillo. Hi, everybody. And Gustavo Segura. How's everybody doing? Gustavo is a lender who's personally responsible for the interest rates, and he's been working hard and not screwing up too bad. Rates are about the same, so good job, Gustavo. That's right. What's, <laughs> what's going on with those interest day. rates? What's going on yeah. in the marketplace? Well, today was a great day because the Fed meeting, uh, they had this meeting today where they did not uh, raise or cut any rates, so that was good. So it's good to just leave it at where it's at, the Fed fund rate. Um, they also said that a March rate cut the next time they meet um, is probably not likely as well. So um, good news for today. Uh, maybe people were wanting to hear something in March to get the rate cut. But um, based on what I'm seeing industry wise, um, everybody expects a rate cut until maybe May, June, at earliest May. And now that he took off March off the table, it seems like at the earliest it would be in May. Uh, probably more likely in June. So, and you know, what does that mean, right? So when the Fed fund rate cut comes down, people are going to be, um, it's going to affect interest rates, yes, but people are going to feel like, okay, the economy will start to pick up speed, right? So they raise the Fed fund rate, slow down the spending, slow down the economy. Once they see that inflation has come down, which it has now, now they, they start looking at cutting it down. Once they cut that down, then people will get back to work and spend more money. <laughs> so um, rates will come down as well in order to make you know uh, buying a little bit more affordable, and people will start buying more. Got it. In case you're wondering, the background, you know, life on video is the second we start this FedEx <laughs> delivery of something unimportant is hits the front door at the moment to set the dog off nonstop. So I'm doing my best to block out the mute. Life and online production these days. Okay, yeah. so Gustavo, so the rates the, and they they're they're put off. It sounds like for a few months. Does that mean um, you don't have good rates, interest rates today to buy, or we have good rates to buy and it may not last? Or no, what no, does no, it yeah. mean to a buyer? No, I, I think it means today that they didn't change anything, which means everybody, as far as Let's investors, go. as far as lenders, lenders, they feel good and they keep rates where they're at, but they come down a little bit more, right? They feel comfortable where it's headed. Right. At the same time. They do expect rates to come down later on. So I think everybody's going to be sharpening their pencil as far as where the rates are going to go, margins. And I think it's going to get better and better each month right. as we move forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. And now that, that doesn't mean people should wait either. It's like, oh, I'm just going to wait next month and next month, you know, because there's inventory issues. There's, you know, a typical house shopper, you know, maybe it takes them two to three months to find the right home, right? Mm -hmm. So you take that and then you multiply that by having a lower inventory and then they can't find their house. So they could be looking for a house for six, seven, eight, nine months. So you want we'll to never sure find it. If you wait for the price to go down, it might never be there. Yeah, exactly. So you definitely want to get going on it and, and start looking at it. And for people that were waiting for rates to come down in order to come into their budget, um, I think this is the start of it now without, um, you know, to see in the next coming months. Now, for those who are watching online, sorry about the cough. So, that, so those watching online, <laughs> Missy says she thinks somebody's breaking my house. No, that's my dog. That's my wife's dog. I don't have a dog. My wife has a dog, and it will bark nonstop till I go to the front door and pick up whatever am stupid Amazon thing. My wife, I bought some lipstick or some paper towels or something, and so that's what the dog sounds like. It sounds like it's the end of times, but it's just yeah. some meaningless delivery. If there was an actual break in. The dog would just wag its tail and lick the person to death as it came in and killed me. So just <laughs> so you know, I'm not big on the dog. Okay, Patricia, how many people do you know said they're going to wait for a race to come down and never buy the house? Well, I mean, quite a few, actually. I'm, you know, that's what I'm working on these days is just touching base with them again, giving them a real update on the market because most people watch the news and you know it one week the housing is, market is crashing and then the next day it's like oh you know mortgage applications are up again and so i think people are just really confused and not really knowing exactly what is going on in the housing market and this weekend i had an open house at one of my listings in lawndale and I had quite a few people come through, you know, each day it was, um, 
anywhere between nine to 10 families come through. And I was really surprised only, I would say only two of them, like one each day had a loan approval. So, and that's what I've been experiencing in hosting other open houses is that most people that are out looking at homes right now really do not know what they qualify for. Is it interesting? So, no. Yeah. So I ask everybody that comes through um, if they have a lender, if they, you know, have any idea what what loan product they're going to be utilizing. Are they going to be getting a conventional loan or are they going to be getting an FHA loan? And so they start asking me what the difference is. And then obviously I know that they have no loan approval and they haven't even gone down that path with the lender. And so I was just talking to Gustavo this weekend, letting him know that I had quite a few people that were interested in having this analysis, right? So we're not going to pull your credit. We're going to ask you a few questions and go over your scenario and see what your liabilities are, your debts and your income and come up with a price for you. This way you can know at least what range you're going to qualify for. And it's going to be pretty close to what that will be once, you know, we do put your credit, but it is so important to have a loan approval and at least get some estimate even possible before you go out and look at homes because this listing I have is 925000 So people have no idea what kind of mortgage payment that's going to look like, right? right. Um, in fact, I was talking to another buyer today, no Nevada. She wants to come back to California to be with her children. And she said, I don't want my mortgage payment to be any higher than 1400 month. And I thought, you know, I can look at a home that's about 400,000. And I said, well, no, if you're looking at a home that's 400,000, you're going to be actually paying about, you know, 33, 3,500, you're putting on the rate. And right. so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where people are just um, not really doing the homework before they go out looking at homes. And I think it'll save a lot of time and maybe even some heartache in getting the Optical analysis done with Gustavo and letting it help you at least get to a estimation on the price as to what you qualify for. Well, I think there's two parts to this. If I could, you know, rephrase what you're saying, which is one, there is the, if you don't pre-approve uh, ahead of time to find what you what you qualify for, you're going to possibly waste your time. Right. right. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and and so to some people. It's not a waste of time. They they kind of like go out looking at houses and, and all that, which I guess is your prerogative. But if you really want to buy a home and you really want to create the wealth effect of owning a property, then you know you might as well find out exactly what you qualify for so you can shop in an area that you can afford to buy. It's so interesting. My my daughter works for a major retailer and they have what they call um oh, I just lost the name on it, where they sprinkle in like really high quality goods. They're great buys in their normal mix. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that way people, customers go not knowing what they're going to find. And that creates excitement in the shopping. Well, that's it's great. It's a treasure hunt. House. I'm sorry, treasure hunt. There you go. It's a treasure, treasure hunt. hunt. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and apparently in retail, I don't know. I don't retail shop. I go online and buy what I want. But but apparently, Patricia, apparently mm -hmm. people go to, the, uh, go to stores just to look and find yeah. stuff. Right. Imagine that. But mm -hmm. with houses, you're not going to just find a great deal out there by stumbling into it. It really requires planning, preparation, and the hard work. And that's why we do this right. with Gustavo and why we encourage you guys to get peer approved ahead of time. Okay. Yeah. So Missy said she's just messing with me. No, Missy, actually, it did sound like somebody's breaking in the house. But again, <laughs> it was just a, a worthless, another Amazon delivery that my dog makes it sound like it's the end of times. Um, and she said she's in Fredericksburg. Still a strong seller's market. Lots of buyers testing the wires again. I say the market still here is not as strong, but still a seller's market. Sure. Um, not as strong a seller's market, but still a seller's market. Patricia, how would you trim it mm -hmm. here in LA? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think you're right. And you know, for most parts of LA County, that's where we're at. You know, it is still, I would say, more of a seller's market than a buyer's for sure. Um, some of our, you know, team members that have made offers on other properties, they're looking at 12, 10 offers on homes. 
you know, so we are looking at that multiple offer scenario again. And even though rates are under 7% right now, they don't have to actually be in the fives. You know, I think people are waiting for them to get down into the 5% range. But at this point, I do see a lot of activity. The buyers that are well prepared and that have their loan approval, they are out shopping and making offers and getting accepted. Um, you know, some of the on our website where we see the homes that people are searching for and and it records the activity of the buyers, I can see most of those properties are already active under contract or pending. And, um, you know, homes are selling within 30 to 60 days, sometimes sooner, depending on the property and the location. But it's still definitely, I would say, very high activity on the buyer side. They're out there making offers and, you know, it's still competitive. Definitely. Um, Gustav, what do you see as far as the market? Yeah, definitely more people are, are uh, coming up with questions because they're coming out of the woodworks, right? They are seeing that maybe the rates have gone down or they heard about it. Or now all of a sudden you have a lot more uh, lenders advertising a little bit more, right? So now they're like, okay, we're going to spend a little bit of money, push out the rates now that it's, you know, uh, much lower. So they're coming out of it, but it's still the analysis process has to be done. Um, I, you know, I can appreciate the whole window shopping and going out, but you know, you're not going to buy something that is less than a hundred bucks or $200, right? You're out there looking for a home and it's a big time purchase, which is why it's very hard for even some of the people that walk in that don't have a lender that you start talking to them to provide you with some information because they know it's going to take some analysis. Um, so while I can appreciate that they want to go out and take a look. They should really take one step back and take a look at getting that stuff ironed out because I can go to like, I don't know, any retailer store and I can say, sure, that's a hundred bucks. I'm willing to do it. Let's do it. Let's, you know, it's for the moment kind of thing, mm -hmm. but you know, getting a 600,000 or $800,000 loan is not something that you're going to be able to get done in one day. So definitely I suggest people to go back to that step one and talk to someone like myself that can give them that analysis and really give them a, a full picture of the full payment taxes home insurance you know mortgage insurance into it and like you said patricia it's going to be 3500 bucks or 4000 you know it's not going to be 1500 dollars. it's not just the rent payment there's also added things that go with it right i haven't even seen a rent payment at 1500. <laughs> that's true i was going to say other than cars what, what can you rent for 1500. <laughs> yeah no, that's true very um, true yeah i don't i don't see so much um, of, of that. So, okay. So, and then how do we feel about, you know, it's so interesting because I, I, I have, um, real estate agents who've kind of dropped out of the business who call me and say, well, I hear the market is really bad. I say, well, I guess if you're not working and the market's really bad, I, I'm busy. I could always use more. Um, but I hear a lot from people that kind of talk, like the news is negative. But the number of deals is about the same as last year. The them, you know, there's a few less real estate agents. Okay, a little less competition. What do you see overall in terms of the marketplace of business as a professional, uh, Patricia? Yeah, I mean, I do see, um, you know, less real estate agents. I had one actually that just called me last week that you and I both know, and she said, "Are you still an agent?" And I said, "Yes, I am, and I'm full time." And I said, well, you know, what's going on? How can I help you? And so she was basically going to start working as a full-time transaction coordinator. And she said, if I get any referrals, can I just send them your way? Because she's, you know, basically not going to renew her license. So I just wanted to mention it is expensive for realtors to continue every year paying their dues. We also have a lot of memberships that we need to subscribe to in order to keep our business going, yep. um, you know, such as the super apps on our phones, our CRM, our websites, and, you know, the rental uh, of the post for the uh, yard sign. I mean, there's so many things that little details that add up. And so every month there's a lot of expenses and whether you're closing deals or not, it can be kind of tough. So I have seen some agents that have left the business that I personally know. And, um, you know, it's just kind of where they're at right now in this market. But some agents had a really hard year last year and some agents had a great year last year. But it just depends. Everybody has a different work ethic. 
um, different clients that they're working with. You know, some deals ended up falling apart for this one agent that I'm talking about. And she was hoping that if these deals closed, she was going to continue as a realtor. But one thing for one reason or another, she had four different deals that were pretty, you know, pretty large as far as sales price. And they all just kind of unraveled. Um, so she said that just broke her. And I think that's what happens is once you've been working so hard all year, you know, a lot of agents end up just saying, you know, forget it. I'm just going to do something else. So I have seen some of that. What I also wanted to mention is a buyer beware. Um, I And as Gustavo mentioned, more lenders are advertising right now because they're trying to get the business. And so buyers just be careful because if something sounds too good to be true, it is. If you see, you know, um, 1% down payment program, um, that's something that really, you know, needs a second pair of eyes on like myself and Gustavo because I've seen that on Instagram. I've seen it on YouTube. And so there's, there are a lot of lenders right now that are trying to get business as well. And so they, advertise something that's geared towards first time home buyers to get grab their attention and if it doesn't sound like something fascinating people are not going to look at it so right. it's over embellished as far as the loan program and the down payment you know it sounds like you're just putting out minimal amount of money but there's no free lunch ever you're going to pay for the you know, the convenience of that in one form or another, either an origination fee or a higher percentage rate. I mean, there's going to be some kind of payment along the way. So just be careful when you're looking at these advertisements from lenders. The uh, uh, There's no free lunch. There's no free lunch. There's not. It's just, it's just not. A, there's going to no, be a cost, you know, yeah. there's definitely going to be a cost. Yeah, I tell, I tell, I try to tell people um, there's no uh, free mortgage or refinance or a no cost loan, right? Everybody hears about that. There's ways to make it a no cost loan. For example, on a refinance, they they roll in the the charge, they roll it into the loan amount. So you're like, oh, I got a refinance done and I got nothing out of pocket. Sure. That doesn't mean that you got a no cost loan. They added the two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars for the refinance cost into your loan amount. Right. You know, so you will pay it, and yes, you have nothing out of pocket, which is still a great thing for a lot of people. It makes sense. They're like, I don't have, I don't have money right now, but if I can refinance and lower my immediate payment, great. So yes, but you need someone to just give you the upfront details and let you know that. Once you know that, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to pay for it later on. But hey, I'd rather pay it later than right now. Let's take advantage of the savings. So, you know, let's not hide things. Let's put them out there as it is so that the consumer is very much aware of what's happening. Right. Absolutely. So just be careful, buyers. If something sounds too good to be true. It probably is. <laughs> yeah. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. Okay. So last words, mm -hmm. let's do our homework or deal with good people. Um, yeah. Mason says, you go back to your farm and ask if they're orphans and like to check their equity. Drop them your home bot for equity watch. So Mason is suggesting they're people we know who we need to reach out to rather than worrying about strangers. And I think that's definitely true as real estate agents. We spend mm -hmm. too much energy chasing people we don't know and just go a little deeper the people we do know. And she has an interesting right. way of going there and setting them up on a, on a home search process. Mixie, thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last last words of wisdom here. It's uh, Wednesday here going into the week but before the Super Bowl. So a week from Sunday, yeah. a lot of people would have parties and social stuff mm -hmm. uh, and still shop for houses. But this week, there's no excuse. Right. A lot of home open houses this week. Gustavo, what are your suggestions for home buyers? Yeah, uh, definitely start looking at your numbers. You know, how much down payment you're going to put down, right? If it's 3%, 3.5%, well, you know, <clears throat> out of 900,000, that's a good amount of money that you need to be aware of. So yeah. some people, you know, may not even know that much as far as how much do I need to have my down payment and closing costs, right? Once they start hearing some of those numbers, it gets a little bit more real. So definitely start having those conversations. Give me a call and we'll go over the numbers. And then that way it could be a more realistic expectation of the home buying process. Good advice. Right. Patricia. 
Yeah. And if you are already at that point where you're serious about looking for a home, and even if you're not, I mean, even if you're just out looking at homes and maybe you see someone that uh, you see a home that you do like, one of my recommendations would be, you know, get an insurance quote. It doesn't hurt to get an insurance quote. Call your agent, give them the address. Um, you know, right now, because insurance companies are really pulling back on writing all of the <coughs> state farm. You know, they're not writing policies right now in California for residential homes. They've pulled back on that. Um, you know, it's a good idea, especially with homes that tend to need repairs. So that happened on one of my last closings. It was a fixer house and the insurance company asked for the home inspection. So they scrutinized that report up and down and we had to go through several <coughs> insurance companies to get the binder um, for the property. So that's another thing that I've dealt with lately. A lot of buyers are, you know, because the prices are somewhat elevated, they want to buy a fixer home, but you're going to end up paying um, a higher premium in insurance. And some, some insurance companies may not want to write the policy. So just be careful when you're looking at homes that need repairs and if you are out shopping for homes, just call and get a quote so you can get a realistic expectation on what that premium is going to look like for you. All right. Shop, prepare, work hard. We're here to help you. Uh, Patricia, right. thank you. Gustavo, thank you for thank you. you guys' time this week. On behalf of them, everybody watching today on YouTube and Facebook, <clears throat> feel free to put any comments or questions there. We'll follow up later as well. I'm Bill Gross. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody.